Welcome to our second video dedicated to defensemen and defensive play. It's intended to help develop three individual skills that defensemen need to be really effective. We're also showing a defensive zone concept designed to regain the puck quickly and start back up ice on offense. The skills are changing the angle, shooting from the offensive blue line, one-timer shots, and net coverage concepts in front of the net, even strength. The defensive zone play is called the shrink. In other words, outnumber and contain your opponents with the objective of regaining possession of the puck. As a coach, you may not choose this particular system. However, the idea can apply to other D-zone systems. The important part is that everybody has a specific job to do. So let's move to the first shrink drill. The idea here is outnumber the opponents in a small area in the defensive zone with every player having an assignment. The shrink starts when the first defender makes contact with the opponent along the wall, typically below the hash mark. Once that happens, immediately the next defender seals the wall to keep the puck from going back out to the blue line. The third defender, likely to be the center, moves quickly towards the puck with the objective of steering the second and third opponents towards the puck. These defenders must stay goal side and in contact with the opponents. The weak side defenseman comes across to the strong side and the weak side wing is in the low slot to help with the breakout if the puck comes to the winger on the wall. Or cover the front of the net if the other defenseman retrieves the loose puck along the back wall. If the puck comes up the wall to the winger, the breakout is initiated with the other forward. The defenseman in front should also join the attack, creating an odd man rush. If the puck comes out of the shrink around the net, the defenseman should gain possession and join the rush up ice as appropriate. The players in this video are a group of high school players who were introduced to the system as we shot the footage. In 20 minutes, they had a great grasp of the concept. Of course, the devil's in the details. Once the shrink starts, they all need to move quickly to their positions and take space away from the opponents. The defenseman in front of the net should be facing up ice with vision over shoulder to allow movement towards the puck if it comes out along the wall. Speed is essential. Introducing this at peewees would be appropriate as they are not body checking. At Bantams, they would have the concept down where there is less need for body checking and instead regain the puck and in initiating the counterattack. This is an important distinction and a change in philosophy from go in and start hitting, checking, and banging opponents to contain and outnumber opponents to regain possession. Less physical play will result in better D-zone play and fewer injuries from unnecessary body contact along the wall. A great number of goals are initiated on shots from the point. What is key here is that shots get away really quickly and to the net where there are opportunities for deflections, tips, or rebounds. Additionally, the defenseman should improve their shooting angle whenever possible, force the goalie to move, and shoot through open lanes. This is why they need the skills to move across the blue line with a quick release of a wrist shot. For younger players, you might want to run this drill across the tops of the circles instead of the blue line, so they have more success at getting the puck to the net. As they master the skills, move them back further towards the blue line.
One-timers are difficult shots as they require terrific balance and timing. This one-timer drill helps players develop both skills. It has a passing component and the shot. Notice that many of the shots are not high quality because these players have not been exposed to this drill previously. Again, shorten the distance of the net for peewees and maybe even bantams until they get a good handle on the one-timer. It takes practice, but it is an essential skill for defensemen so they can get the puck to the net fast. Net play by defensemen is critical. Here you will see examples of good front of the net coverage during five on five play. The keys for defensemen are hip on hip, toes up ice, and swivel head to track the puck and the opponents. The defender must be in a position to get a stick under the opponent's stick if the puck moves to the area. If the opponent moves out a ways, the defender should stay with the opponent on the goal side until puck possession is regained. I would suggest that after the goaltenders, defensemen are the next most important skill position on the team. Youth and high school coaches that spend time on these and other skills that defensemen need as individuals and as defensive units will see much better results. The individual skills can be found in our earlier video, Developing Defenseman Part 1, which can be found on the Minnesota Hockey website. Lastly, I believe that the use of technology can greatly help players learn. Using an iPad to video practice sessions and games is a valuable tool when used correctly. So thank you for joining us in our second video to help coaches develop their defensemen and give them the skills that they need to be much more effective.